<laughs> well, welcome, Kate. It's really good to have you here. I'm delighted to be finally uh, talking with you about your journey of building your business, writing your book, transforming. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Now, some of our guys know who you are, but lots of them don't. So give us a, a little bit of a snapshot of, uh, you know, who Kate is and how you came to be sitting here talking to me. Cool. So I've been an action coach now for just over two years, had my anniversary in May. And Prior to that, I was working in um, leadership coaching in healthcare, but my background's actually palliative care nursing. So I was a nurse for 10 years clinically. Um, so always, I suppose, been pretty passionate about helping people. Um, what brought me to you, Brett, was I, there was two, two reasons really. One was I needed some focus and clarity. Um, and, and I thought that perhaps that my book or a book could be um, the way to do that. And the second thing was I needed a challenge to prove to myself that I could finish something. <laughs> so I'm pretty, so you're good uh, at starting lots of projects, but I'm, I'm like biggest shiny object syndrome sort of type of person getting around. So, so I needed um, part of, you know, me coaching myself was to go, right, what's something that's probably going to be really tough but can prove to yourself that you've got enough grit and perseverance to finish something. Yeah, yeah. And so a book was one of those things. So um, had, I declared that to my community, I guess, online. And now, and then that was the role, the role on effect was, oh shit, now I've got to finish this. So, so once you told them you're going to do it, they started, um, that was your public accountability. It was, it was. Um, and you know, it's been a bit of a slog, but I'm very excited to say that I will have the book in my hot little hand next week. So yeah, it's good. You'll officially be an author with a real book. That'll yeah, be Everybody will be getting a book. That'll be great. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Um, talk to me a little bit about, so, so uh, you know, you've, you've moved from a sort of corporate life, if you like, or, or in, the, in the health system to running your own business as a coach. Um, what was... What do you see are the major challenges for anyone running their own um, traditional one-to-one -one coaching business? Well, I think that the, when I started, my biggest challenge was understanding who my market was and, right. and or who the people that I was going to connect with the most. And I think, um, and, and certainly since I've um, decided to niche, which is another reason that the book became to be, yep. um, a lot of people have kind of uh, not followed suit, so, so to speak, but I'm noticing that a lot more people have started to niche because the challenge is, is you know, you're shooting barrel, like apples in a barrel, there's too much. Yeah. There's so um, breadth and depth to coaching and yeah. and you know you can segment down and you yourself Brett you know you were a bit of an inspiration for me in that that you'd niched into a type of coaching um, in your team and culture side of things yep. and so I looked at that and went okay well obviously you can segment down by industry or you can segment down by say subject matter yeah um, and and that's the biggest challenge I think is people being clear in their own heads about well who are my people and that that are going to respond well to me and who are going to connect well with me and that I have a level of authority to speak to um, on and that's where again like doing this has just helped me to um, I guess build that confidence to feel that I I, I can um, and do have that level of authority with the group that I've picked which uh, is ladies with tradies so excellent so so there's an element before I speak about ladies with tradies um, mm. there's an element of um, who do I like working with or my question is is there an element of who do I like working with as well in that oh for sure and so um, what came to be and, and how ladies with tradies came to be was that I noticed that I was really enjoying working with trades um, and so I liked it and you could do a lot with them and for them. Um, and it was a really lovely um, way to, to, to find your passion. I suppose I stumbled over it a little bit. Um, it came to me because obviously it was congruent with who I am because I'm married to a tradie, a big hairy carpenter. 
<laughs> and he's Big, beautiful, beautiful, hairy carpenter. Beautiful, hairy carpenter. He's gorgeous. And, um, you know, I, I am able to relate, I guess, easily with these people because I am them. Um, so, so that's where my connectivity and cut throughs come from is that does I, that, I really can. And does that make it, does that just give you a bit more energy or, or like, cause coaching can be a very, um, uh, challenging and draining. Like it's emotionally quite, quite, uh, a yeah. difficult job to do. But I imagine when you're working with these ladies with tradies and seeing them progress, that must have a, an energizing element. Oh, it's, it's phenomenal. And I still, I get that excitement in my tummy. Just yesterday, one of um, my clients who's been with me for about nine months, you know, when they came to me, the concreting business, they said, you know, we really want to um, buy, buy this dream house. We've been looking at it for years. It's been on the market and nobody's bought it, but we really want it. But, oh, it's never going to happen. Literally three or four months ago, we decided that we were going to get that house for them. And yesterday, they on their coaching call, they let me know that they literally, before they got on the call with me, signed the contract for that house. <laughs> that must feel pretty good oh to know. Oh, my like, God. Yeah, and they saved that the deposit for that house within three months just because we, you know, we, worked, we built their belief in themselves and, and helped them to understand they can do it. You know, this is this, it's like a mirror. I see me and Jace, my husband, in these people. And, and when, you, when you see that, you go, right, I just want as much for them, if not more, than we want for ourselves. Yeah. And it does. It's totally energising. And that's just one example of how I just get so excited because you, you can help these people. Now, so, tell me about, because I don't know a coach on the planet who doesn't struggle with niche. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, there, I, there, there's certainly this sense of, but if I niche, aren't I cutting off a lot of opportunity? Is that a question you had to deal with? Um, I guess, <clears throat> yeah. So there's, there's this interesting conversation that happened around me, I guess, when I made the decision that I was going to niche that, that and there's a lot of reasons that people will say to you why it's a bad idea. Yeah. They'll say, you know, it limits your own growth in what you will learn about coaching or becoming like being a better coach because you're, you're cutting off, you know, all these other types of businesses that you could be exposed to. Yeah. Well, I kind of call a bit of BS on that because every business is the same. You know, they, they all work. They all have the similar struggles. Yeah. And yes, I will absolutely learn the lingo and the language of my own trades industry as an example yep. which will be different to retail or hospitality or whatever else so yeah so, yeah definitely um people can be challenged by it but i it's honestly the best thing i ever did because it created a level of you know instead of trying to approach you know this wider market it came down quite significantly and and my marketing just became simple Right. So that was going to be my next question. What became simpler when you really focused on the market, your niche, the ones that give you energy, the ones that you feel passionate about? It just, it just can't became easy in every element. So oh. it was easy for me to uh, find them through marketing. So, Hey, pretty easy yep. to build a database of tradies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, then uh, it became easy to speak their language and identify their problems. And so yep. uh, that then rolled on to me being able to build a social media platform that was so, oh, it's just, you know, it's built on pillars, which you might go yep. into later, um, yep. Brett, as far as how you build the book. But all you got to do is talk to the themes from your book every single day you get on Facebook live or if you're on your coaching call or if you, you know, it's, it's so bloody easy. Right. And I don't <laughs> mean to sound arrogant about that. It's, it's just becomes. Well, it's, it's probably, I guess what I hear you saying is it's simple. You don't have to worry about all these other bits and pieces. Um, you just get clear on who you're helping, how you're helping them, and by the way, you've already captured all of that in your book. So it's really just a matter of what element are we working on today? And I would imagine 
you get to go deeper than the book. Obviously, the book is the beginning, but when you're working with someone, now you can actually implement and go much deeper. Oh, absolutely. And I think the amazing thing about the book and when you're writing it is you, you could literally write six books at once. And I yes. guess... Um, and, that, and that's where, you know, working with you, it, it became um, a, a much clearer because my struggle has always been, but I've got so much to say. I've got yeah. so much to say. Like, but how do I get make that clear and concise and um, relatable without boring the shit out of me? Or, or without complicating it. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And simplifying. Hmm. Um, so, so I guess the whole ladies with tradies is, I mean, I've always thought that's absolutely brilliant (laughs) because, um, we know our tradies work bloody hard, Mm. but the ladies are the ones who both suffer and can potentially be a a change agent for them, aren't they? Tell me a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so so the reason Ladies with Tradies came to be, again, if I go back, is um, I, I realised that a lot of women were dragging their trades to come to meet me. Right. And then um, because they there was some, I don't know, maybe they connected with me or they saw uh, something of themselves in, my, in me uh, okay. and so they're saying, oh, come on, you've got to come and see this chick. She's going she's gonna to sort us out. Yeah. So... Um, what what that's really about is is they they can see the potential in their tradie they believe yeah. in their tradie they can see the struggles and the opportunities to, for improvement but they don't know how to connect with him in a way that he's going to actually make that change right right and um, so you know they I guess. And it's never being disrespectful to the trades, but they come and they're coming to me banging their heads against the wall. These women with their tradies going, mate, like this man is unbelievable, but I cannot get him to friggin do some of the most basic things to help himself. Yeah, Here, yeah. Can you deal with him? <laughs> so, um, and is is that a case that they're so busy doing, like working in their business, doing their trades, and and all of that sort of stuff that they're not able to step back and, and take a bigger look? Um, so there's a couple of things with it that I've learned. It's, it's, they have been grown from a baby apprentice trade, tradesperson, yeah. uh, into a technician. And they are technicians. They're not managers or entrepreneurs. So those are people who have read the E-Myth. It's the, what, the first book they yeah. all have to read when they work with me. Yep. It's a negotiable they all of a sudden read that book about, you know, getting out of technician mindset and into, um, you know, manager, entrepreneur. And it's a place they've never thought about before. They believe, they truly believe, if I just keep working hard, I'll make money. Yeah. And so, um, so there's, and then there's a bit of, so there's a lack of skill and a lack of will. So, right. so there's a bit of a skills gap in, like they're, they're massively skilled at being technicians but they just have never focused. They don't know how to run a business. And, and, and they're the first to say it. They go, I don't know. I I don't know what I should be looking at in my profit and loss. I don't know how to recruit properly. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to set a system up. That's going to help me run my jobs better. Yeah. Um, So they don't, and they don't know what they don't know sometimes, or they do know, but they're a bit scared to face it. Yeah, and I guess the, the the issue for the ladies with the tradies is that they're kind of probably bearing a bit of the uh, the brunt of, you know, the stresses of trying to run a business but trying to be a technician. Yeah, so, so the biggest thing I hear is how do I get him to come and sit with me in the office so that we can get stuff done. And they get co-opted into... So, you know, I, I almost don't know a tradie whose lady hasn't been dragged into their business. That's right. Yep. So it's willingly a, or not. That's right. It's it's almost an assumed position. Yeah. Um, yeah. Comes with the territory of being a tradie wife. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the positioning of um, looking at your book from uh, you, okay, ladies, this is what you need to know about your tradies. Yeah. Um, 
is that kind of the way you approach the book? Yeah, so so the thing that um, that motivates and drives me to get up every day, I suppose, is to reduce the regrets in lives of people who are running. Yeah. Yep. So, so that's that's my overarching vision, I suppose, is that everybody that I meet through this process, yeah, eliminating regret. And there's a big backstory there that I don't really need to go into, but basically, when I meet these people, um, they're they're struggling with their relationships. So yep. they're on the end with their relationship. Yeah. The, they, their kids are at risk of ha- not having a relationship with them too because they're working from, you know, dawn yeah. till dusk. And um, that's what gets the misty eyes happening in the first session with me is that, well, I don't know how to get control of this beast because there is yeah. no shortage of work for tradesmen. Right. So they could work from sun up till sundown if they wanted to. There is plenty of work. They don't have problems with marketing these people. Yeah. But what they have problems with is controlling the beast, which is their business. Yeah, Um, yeah. And, you know, one wife actually explained to me um, via an email, she said, our business is his mistress. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And so... You know, that's literally how, how it feels for them. So so they, they just really, the way that the um, book is addresses some of this stuff is I, I reflect on my experience as a palliative care nurse and for having yep. some tragedies in my own life and talking about that in the language of a tradie yep. um, and how to how I, that's connecting with them in, you know, when you're lying in your, on your deathbed staring at the roof, yep. is it really going to be have been worthwhile that you've worked your ass to the bone and not maintained your relationships with your family. So that's sort of where you know, that perspective comes feels, from. Yeah. Feels a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great why, like it's a driver for the whole book. Hmm. And then, and then um, because I guess you, you sort of alluded to it earlier um, when you and I first started talking about, um, the book, my experience, I guess, was that if this if this circle represented Kate attempting to tell me what she wanted to write about, the conversation felt a bit like that. Oh yeah. Like Sorry. there was like I want to I want to do this and I want to do that. And da, 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 da. Um, what was that like? Like you know, turning up to sort of do that. Did it feel like that? So that that picture you've just drawn is my brain most days. <laughs> okay, um, right. And because you know, when you when you realise that you're onto something good and you can impact a lot of people, you do have a lot of ideas. And yeah, you've got a lot of um, stuff, I suppose, that you want to do. A lot of ways you want to help people. That's right. So it's about helping people. And yeah. so when I sort of understood a bit about what your work was about. I could, and because I've worked with you before, Brett, like you trained yeah. me to be a coach. Yep. Um, I knew that your the way you present models made it simple and easy to articulate what could be some complex and or big ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I knew that was a strength in you that I needed to harbour and, and work on in myself. Yeah. Um, so, yes, I went from that to going... Oh my God, look how simple it is. <laughs> right. And, and like, cause everyone listening now is going, Oh, that's, that's such a ladies were tradies. That's such a great niche. It's a, you know, but I want them to know that it didn't start out exactly that way. Did it? It started out like the image on the left here with lots of ideas and, it, and, and I guess my, and let me know if this is the case, but um, as we went through the book and we had to clarify those ideas, we started to get to more of this kind of bullseye, target kind of um clarity yeah yeah and and that that was what i true and and um so and i've called it my anchor and that's what that right. regret is yeah um i needed to you know i was doing i i am the person i am bright shiny love everything excited all the time I'm like a ship on the water, just, you know, the wind just drives me. Like I wake up today and I go, woo, how exciting. (laughs) But what the book's done and the work with you in developing the model, um, the genius model, has been to anchor me to a place that says everything's got to come back to that girl. If you are 
if your little bright shiny dolphin personality is going over there, is that bringing you? Is that actually helping you to achieve that for your people? Yeah. If not, buddy, ditch it. Yeah. So that's what the book's done. So it gives you it gives you boundaries around. Yeah. Okay, let's not go off over there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And and I guess um, one of the things that I particularly want to talk about today is how you've moved from. Um, from the book into generating business. Hmm. Uh, and I know we're only on the beginning of this journey with you because the, the book will land in your hand next week, at, but you're already generating income from the book before the book's even out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, so I, it's been a bit over like around 12 months since I started working with you, Brett. And um so I was doing about 10 grand a month back then, which yep. you know, coming out of public health, you think's all right. Yeah. And coming out of a wage, you know, that yeah, sounds coming all out right. Of space. Yep. Um, and, you know, and I've been knocking over about 30 grand a month um, since. Fantastic. So, so we, we've grown pretty quickly. In 12 uh, months. Yep. Yeah, since getting that clarity, like gaining that clarity. Yep. Um, yeah. And we'll do more than that this month that's for sure um because we've been able to we've since the book we have developed an online program and an online course right right so let's talk a little bit about that because um mm. the the traditional action coach model and i would say for a vast majority of coaches are all over the world mm. um it the cornerstone of your business is one-to-one -one yep. coaching yep. was that where you started yeah, so so I and I still so I've got twenty clients at the moment, one to ones. Yep. yep. Um, and I fit them into three to four days a fortnight. Yep. And uh, so that I've got this space to innovate and to do things like building the online course in the opposite week of the fortnight. So yeah. Yep. So uh, my business was it grew on one to one coaching and I did a yep. lot of my learning from the one to one coaching of what I knew I would need to well, well I, there were a lot yep. of lessons learnt to inform the book, but yep. then to inform what would come from a more because I needed to I need to leverage. Yeah. Right. I can only help bloody twenty pe twenty businesses. Like how many trade businesses are there in Australia? Yeah, like that I thousands and thousands. That's right. Hundreds of thousands. And right. so, <clears throat> so what I, and the book again was going to help me serve a purpose to, you know, leverage my message, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, so, I mean, there's so many positives to the book. Obviously I'm a raving fan of the whole freaking thing, but <laughs> even though it took me one year to bloody make it happen. Well, you know what, as long as it takes, but oh, the, thing, yeah. the thing about it is, um, Let's put it this way. Halfway through the book process, you were beginning to make money from the book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In, in fact, I sort of remember the clarity that you got within the first month or two of this impacted your one-to-one -one coaching. Yeah. And oh. probably made your marketing a bit stronger. Oh, so uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I... Um... When I once I realised that I it was going to be a fairly com, it, it needed to be a bit of a community that I created yep. like with tradies. It sort of sounds like a little cult in and of itself. <laughs> um, it, what the book did was help me to again anchor back to the model, which is you know what what are the what are the key things that people want? They want to reduce stress. They want to make money. Um, and they like they want choice and options, and they just want to like stay married a lot of the time too. <laughs> and so, so really, the book just helped me to hammer my social media, which is my, my the platform yeah. I use to market. Yeah, everything just comes back to that. So the the it, I imagine the book immediately had an impact on your one to one because your marketing was much more focused and. Because uh, what I do remember, particularly from our uh, our game plan session where we where we unravelled all that spaghetti in your head, <laughs> was that there was a real shift in your mind from what I want, like what Kate wants to teach them, versus what they really desperately need to know, like what they what yeah. will attract them. That was a so, big shift. Oh, massive, Brett. So because I think 
when you're in, especially when you're a, you know fairly newish to coaching and you're still finding your way a little bit, I you're almost desperate to legitimise yourself. Yeah. Yep. And I'm pretty, I'm very open and vulnerable with this. You know, I, I, I was almost this desperation in myself that the more that I show and prove to people that I know what I'm talking about, yeah, then the more um, credibility and, you know, that I will get, gain and authority. And it's probably, that's a sort of probably our uni and our school training. It's I know more, therefore I'm, you know, I've got valid you know, I'm valid in that sense. That's right. And, and because I know more, I have to shove all that shit down your throat as hard and as fast as I can so that you know how good I am so that you want to take me on. Yeah. But what the game plan that I'm working with you did was just strip that all back and go, stop serving yourself, get out of your own way. What do they actually want? Like, good yeah. on you, Muldoon. Like, fabulous. You know all this cool shit. But get back and excuse the language. This is <laughs> but when I get it's a bit... crazy language. Come on. But if you, you know, if you're like, you can try and jam that stuff down their throats as much as you want just because you know it or you can strip strip yourself back a little bit and go to that place of vulnerability and yeah. go, right, what actually do they need? And that's what that session did for me. I was and, just like, what And I it was doing? really cool because I remember saying to you, what are the actual words they use? And then you said back to me, like, your words. And I went, I bet that's not what they say. And you go, oh, shit, no, they say this. You know, and I'm like, well, that's, that's what we're, that's, the, that's our chapter title. That's what we're writing about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and I guess, and that's where, um, you know, the subtitle came from, how to stop shit hitting the fan in love, life and business. And mm-hmm. that's, that's the sub, subtitle of the book. And because, and you know, shit, shit hitting the fan in love, in life and in business are the three things they come to you to fix, right? That's right. Absolutely. Yep. So one of the things I'm looking forward to with your book is I suspect that tradie wives all over the country are going to go, this girl gets me. Well, that's the plan. Yeah. Well, <laughs> your business is showing that as well, I think, because, you know, they're clearly going, they get me. Yeah. She gets me. Yeah. So I, I guess one of the things that I'm really keen to talk a little bit more about is how the book helped you go beyond your boundaries and begin to leverage? Hmm. Um, I, so- think, I think the thing, uh, you know, the problem I experience, and I know I, I mentioned this to you early on, is that um, the one-to-one coaching is a great model, but once you get more than about 20 clients, it, it's, it's exhausting. Like, and, it's, and you're kind of at your limit emotionally and intellectually and energy-wise. Mm-hmm. But as you say, there's only 20 people you can help. How do I help 200 or yeah. 2,000? Yeah. And, and I guess the, the book is, is, it's really clear for people to go, yes, tradies could buy your book and go and do everything in that book and they could help themselves. Uh, so that's, that's at, the, very, um, at the, the thin end of how you help them. But now you're beginning to develop programs that can do a lot of good things. Can you talk to us a bit about, how how doing the book has transformed that one to one into a much more leveraged business yeah so so it's actually been um a little bit surprising in a way the way that the first um online program sort of unfolded so we used the the bones of the book which is you know communication um yeah. time and money yep and and i i remember talking about that as being they're the things that they're most stressed about they are. So they are. it's communication. Yep, yeah, time and money. And I, I specifically, is it money in the bank? We got no money in the bank. Money in the bank. Yep, right. that's right. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, how do, how do I get my tradie to listen to me? How do I actually get him to spend meaningful time with that, with me and the family? And how do we bloody get, make money so that we've got money in the bank? And um, keep it in the bank, yeah. And yeah, that's right. So... So the interesting thing that's also been a byproduct of this is the community that they've created as their own little group. So mm-hmm. when I asked them, you know, what did you get out of today? They're like, oh, it's just so good to know I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not that's the a, only person. That's a powerful, powerful driver if you're in this little bubble of my tradie husband's work and he's asked to the bone 
and the kids are giving me crap and I, I can't feel like I can't move, yeah. just to have other women say, I'm right there with you, must be incredible. Very, very powerful. And they hold a level of intellectual property in and of themselves as a group. Like, yeah. Like they just, because it is truly... Um, and I say to people when they come to me, they go, oh, I feel a bit embarrassed about ABC. And I'm like, mate, that's everyone. Like literally every business that works with me has these problems. Yeah. yeah I'm really sorry to say you're not special. <laughs> and, and you can just see this relief go, they just go, oh, oh okay. Cool. All and right. then, but then they actually, on the group program, they actually communicate with other brilliant women who are expressing the same thing. Correct. Yeah. 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 So, so the reason, so the leverage side of it, um, you know, that's just the byproduct of the community there, but um, I guess what, what's coming from it is that, that there is a level of them being able to do a lot of things for themselves. So right. the strength in working with couples in business is they will have, and for whatever reason, what I've come to learn about ladies with tradies is they are almost opposite ends of the personality profile. Right. So if you've got a highly dominant um, wife, then you've probably got a, a very steady, non-change, adaptive tradie. Yeah. Or a very dominant tradie or a high, highly extroverted tradie with a very detailed focused, tick the um, yep. boxes and dot the I's and cross the T's lady. Yeah. And so how amazing is that to have in a business? And yep. And what the leverage is doing is pulling out the strengths in the lady and telling her just focus on those and stop trying to push, you know, what uphill with him Yep. and giving them the strategies, tools and resources to go and do for themselves because they're very resourceful, these people. And the permission almost. It's oh. like you're giving them some, um, uh, you know, some uh, backing yep. to what they, what they think is good stuff to actually go and, and dig into that. And it's actually things that, I've learnt from working with the couples yep. that work with to cut through with the trades. Right. So they love numbers and data, for example, whereas we're going as the women with feelings and bullshit emotions. <laughs> and they just go, oh, like, it's hit me, 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 me. Yeah. In my videos, I do this all the time because this is what they, this is how all they hear. So if we, I'm sort of trying to equip the women with data and spreadsheets and information that they can go, oh, hey, babe, look. This yeah. is actually where we're sitting and it, and it takes, because men are very logical, give them logical bloody information. Stop and especially them. tradies, they like fixing shit. So give them something to fix. Yeah. And the, now, the, the first sort of course that you've done is basically a short course, right? So it's six weeks. Um, you're getting up to about 10 people on that course. Yeah. Um, and they, it's a much smaller uh, price point you know, than one-to-one than -one coaching. Yep. So I guess that opens it up to a lot of people, but it's still, you know, I, I, you know you're probably in the sub $2,000 for the whole six-week kind of uh, price range. Yep, for sure. Um, and apart from actually, uh, you know, the benefit to the, to the uh, uh, clients, the benefit to your business, I guess, is that now you've, you're being able to, a download the information and just a bit of the information really from the book and turn it into something that can really help people and that is profitable as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and accessible, I think is the other thing here. So, because yeah. the struggle of my community is time. Yeah. So these women, they're running households, they're working jobs, they're running tradie businesses, they're looking yeah. up to kids. And so the level of accessibility of um, I can get on and, and watch the video recording if I don't get on to the accountability call yep. or I can work through the online e-learning platform um, whenever I want and then I can jump on the accountability call if I'm free. Right. Yeah, so it creates a level of accessibility to people as well. So from a, from a client's perspective, I guess what, what you've got is um, you've got your six-week program Yep. Um, they've got what weekly accountability. Yeah. So we've got a weekly call and, and I, that's via zoom so that they can, uh, so that both they can call in from anywhere, but also you can run it from anywhere as well. Correct. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, there's some online, um, online learning. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, um, tools and resources, yep. Yep, tools and resources. Um, and and w what else is in there? Uh, so there's there's discussions, op discussion threads within the online um, e-learning platform, but they've right. actually got a private Facebook group as well, and that is super cool. Right, so the private group? Yeah. Private so group because the paid program goes in there. Right. So, the, and I guess that's where they can get help from the entire community. Yeah. And that's, and so that, um, you know, I might not be able to respond to them in a really timely fashion, like within an hour or two. Yeah. I might be just at the end of the day getting in there to check in on them, but they've already solved each other's problems. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and where it, the bridge comes. And, and I guess the thing, you know, the thing that I'm discovering, particularly through the books, is the importance of holding that, holding that space, I know is a psychological term, but what you've done is you've created the space and you've created the community, you've created the culture and the rules that will help everybody. And um, a lot of people will go, oh, that's easy. It's not easy. Uh, and but once you've done it, it's incredibly valuable. Mm, yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to take you back to the to the coaching session that you and I did, where I said, Kate, I want you to do a six week course, and I want you to start it in three weeks time. Yeah. <laughs> do you remember your reaction to me? Oh, I went bloody hell, Lodges. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I went. Oh, really? Like, I'm just about to move. I am drowning in one-to-ones. I also run a team of six salespeople across Australia and New Zealand. Oh, why not? Let's do it. Let's, <laughs> let's just make it work. Because I needed something. I needed a push. So. Yeah. And, and I guess the thing, I remember you saying, well, what will I talk about? You know, there's a whole book, you know, what will I talk about? And... And the thing that I was really aware of was that we went, okay, what are, just what are the top three biggest issues or, and it might not even be biggest issues, but issues that you can help them with in a short period of time. Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so building an entire marketing machine around them, if they need it, is probably a longer project. But giving them, giving them some tools to better communicate, giving them some tools to, you know, to make some progress in these small areas. Is that kind of how you focused on that? Yeah, yep. So we just, um, as I mentioned before, we picked communication, time and money. Yep. Um, and I, it's interesting what has sort of come, like the learnings from the first program have been quite massive. And what, yeah. um, again, good old Kate of old appeared, which said, give too much information. Um, yeah pack too much in. So we've learned from the first program that literally each of those are six weeks on their own. Right. And yep. um, because, you know, the women in the first, the, we did cash flow first or money. Yep. And we just gave them so much, so many tools and all that kind of thing. And they were just like, oh my gosh, this is just unbelievable. And I sat back and went, that's just one course on its own. Um, right. So, so that... But, but they're sort of in danger of overwhelm, aren't they? Yeah, so we're probably towing the edge there. We've got some pretty high-caliber ladies in there. Um, yep. But, you know, school holidays were in amongst it all. So when they were doing something so simple as auditing their time, they're like, well, that was a shambles because I'm on school holidays. Yeah. Or, so it's about just, um, again, I think you need to do that test program, which I'm grateful that you got me to do it because... Um, yeah, I made money out of it. Great. But what it's done is shown me what to do differently next time. Yeah. Um, so we've but, already booked the next one in, which is just about cash flow. And we've already got, um, I think we've already like built, built lead, like we've done, I think we've got probably 15 to 20 leads from a post that went out two days ago for the next one. Wow. Right. Okay. So, so what you've done is you've gone, Let's just focus on the cash flow. Yeah. And the next six week one will be about the cash flow. Yeah. So all of a sudden you can package up. So what we're moving into now, rather than it being a multiple number of programs, it's more likely to be a subscription type model. Right. Where 
you get on the accountability call. So that's only an hour of my time or an hour and a half of my time every week. Yep. We might have 200 women on a subscription model who have access to the e-learning platform and the Facebook yeah. group to just get in there and it's evergreen content. Yeah, yeah. So it's just massive where we're going with it. It's kind and of and, and, you know, uh, I know you've just moved to a, to a town in uh, rural New South Wales now, I think you are, yep. um, that I think you said had a, a population of about 2,000 people. Yep. Uh, and I guess the thing is, as long as there's decent internet there, and there's probably better internet where you are than in the city, <laughs> yep. um, you can run this business. Yeah, so, so I transitioned all of my one-to-one -one clients prior to the move that were face-to-face. -face. I still had probably eight or nine of them. Transitioned them onto video um, and part of that was to test, see, you know, how that would go. Um, yeah. All my other clients are across Australia and New Zealand, so they were already on video. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so my husband um, and I, we just bought a house, a little place on the river and because that's what we're passionate about and i literally this is how i run my world yeah um, which is cool yeah and it, it, uh, so as a coach i guess that's really transformed your leverage you know your ability to move to the country yeah, yeah. oh amazingly and and to know that um, I can still be helping people in Melbourne, in Sydney, in rural New South Wales, in rural Victoria, because they were my main target at the beginning because I'm yep. from regional Victoria. Yep. Um, and then it just kind of grew from there. Yeah. And, and I guess the thing is uh, what you're talking about too is greater impact. Yeah. You know, because if you're only limiting yourself to the people that you can do face-to-face -face with locally, well, you're kind of, you know, th there's only so many of those you can help. Yeah. And you, you love and adore them, but it's, I mean, you think at what cost? There's so many yeah. people. And I just, I've, I've learned that from my, um, my Facebook pages is there's just so many people that need us out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And particularly, I think when you, uh, when you connect so clearly with your niche, mm. when you, you know, you clearly got that, you, you're speaking their language. They are saying, this girl gets me. Um, it's pretty cool. So yeah, I think it's when, when you feel within, this is when you know you've hit the, 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 that, the mark with your niche is when there are things that drive you so mad and make you so upset and angry that you get super passionate about it or they make you so bloody excited that you get super passionate about it. Like you don't want to be indifferent. You've you don't want to be, be there. Yeah, you've got to get, you've got to have those swings and extremes in, in your gut that help yeah. you to go, I've got to fix that or I've got to keep doing more of that. It's interesting you say that because that's how I felt about, um, about you doing your book, actually. Mm -hmm. I thought, you're an amazing woman who's helping these people, but I think you need to help this many people. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's, it's really cool to see that. And, and I guess the... the in terms of the, the next level of your business, it, it looks to me like while you've got some one-to-ones that you'll keep, uh, the focus of your um, future business, I guess, is, is continuing to build on the, what comes out of the book, the programs and all that sort of stuff. Is that, is that where you're seeing it? Yeah, yeah. So, so I guess it, the the next steps obviously is to gain more exposure and to have more people do the online program. Yeah. Um, and then I guess uh, so. Then that will lead us to events. Yeah. Right. Um, because you know, I I absolutely love meeting these people in the flesh. Yep. It make I there is nothing. I all, I give myself an excitement migraine at the end of every work. <laughs> Um, and it's, there's nothing more powerful than putting everybody in a room together. Um, and because again, it's that community and that I'm not alone, I'm not alone in this, um, feeling that people get. So we'll go to events. Um, lo I'd love to do a bit of media of some description. Yeah. Yep. So working with, a, um, on what PR might look like into the future. Yeah. Yep. And then there's, you know, then there's building alliance partnerships. So 
I've already got some connectivity with master builders and, um, you know, JB Cameron's plumbing and those yeah. sorts of alliances that say, okay, you, you've got access to a huge database of these people who need your help so that your bills get paid. How yeah. can we work together yeah. to make sure that we um, safeguard these people? So that's, that's another avenue as well. And I guess uh, one of the things that uh, I intend to work with you on uh, over the next little while is, um, and, I, and I'll bet a lot of people watching this are probably thinking the same thing, we're just at the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's, there's a really impressive um, level of community and programs which I think that you can build out of this. You know, I'm, I'm seeing, um, you know, doing some really cool stuff, you know, uh, like, uh, and I'm starting to get into this with my clients, um, you know, for example, with the Million Dollar Author Program, I'm actually planning to take a group of 20 people to Venice for a month to write their next book in about 12 months time. Yeah. And I'm like, wouldn't that be cool? We could all run our business from an apartment in Venice yeah. Yeah. and write the next book. And, yeah. and, you know, interesting, but tradies really need that kind of adventurous release, I think sometimes. Exactly. So, and, and, and so, so that's, you know, events are one thing like one day workshops, but it's then um, retreat type. Yeah. A bit of a wank entrepreneur thing to say, let's take everyone on a retreat, but that is what it is. Um, yeah. yeah. Especially for these people, because, you know, um, these people haven't had a holiday in years. Yeah. Yeah. And not that it'll be a holiday because I'll be whipping them and getting them to do some work, but they will be out of their business um, to work on their business. And that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I guess I want to start wrapping up. What are your, you know, you've kind of made this journey from, uh, from fledgling coach to, you know, and I, I bet everyone who's looking at this is going, actually, um, she's, She's where I want to be, you know. I want to be doing that sort of stuff. What? Are, tell me a little bit about what your your maybe top three or four lessons that you've learned. That if someone's kind of in that position where you were, you know, with lots of one to one clients, what are the lessons you've learned from this process that you'd like them to know? Uh, the first thing is uh, invest in. Uh, outsourcing almost um, right. yep. and, and and part of that is coaching yeah. so um, that's why this went where it was because I invested in you yeah um, and at the same time I created a level of accountability to build my social media platform by outsourcing my um, video marketing and my social media marketing so yeah so a coach is your team member. Yeah, um, yeah. Your marketing team is a team member. So that's what I mean by outsource is yeah. much out of yourself so that you're doing what you're good at from the well, beginning. I get, and I guess it's don't try and do it all alone uh, because no. coaches are a little bit renowned for going, well, I'm a coach, I can just coach myself. Well, I guess that the beauty, I think the luxury I had coming into this, Brett, is that I... I believed that I was, I had fallen into an alternate universe that where I didn't belong. <laughs> and, and I just absorbed everything from all of you. Like I remember me at training, total geek. Yeah. Just loved everything about coach yep. training, wanted to learn and ask every question. So just geek out by, and, and be vulnerable and you do not need to know like, Literally, just pull your unscrew your head, pull your brain out, put it on the desk. Anything yep. that you knew before, get let it off. soak up. Yeah. So yeah. just be curious yeah. uh, about everything. Yeah. Um, what about uh, talk to me about what you've learned about how much you actually know, and uh, in terms of when we wrote the book, uh, it it was my impression that you were a little bit surprised at how much you actually knew and could help people by doing the book. Yeah. So I guess if you thought of, of the third lesson, it's believe in yourself and right. believe that you can, that, that you do already have the authority. Yeah. Yep. Um, the book 
almost helps you build that belief. Not not almost, it does. It helps yeah. you build that belief that you you are an authority figure already. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Because it's like when you're standing there with that book in your hand next week, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that photograph. Yeah, can't wait. <laughs> and look at the smile on your face as soon as we say it. Yeah. It's a huge att- achievement and it also is... Uh, it sort of almost sounds like both a professional and a personal development program in itself. Yeah. So the thing is, this is what you've coached all of us. And we've talked about this on calls before and with some of the other coaches who have written books um, that I'm good mates with who have done your program. It's so it's freaking scary to put yourself onto a page. Yeah. And so to have um, like the likes of yourself and the other group members in the book group going, bullshit girl, like you've got this, you like, this is going to be amazing. And you just got to keep going um, and chipping away and chipping away and being available so openly when you just like, oh shit, I need to re-engage with this. I've been like putting it on the back burner. That is unbelievable. And I would never have done this or finished it or like, cause I did start another book, didn't I, Brett? We'd already, yep. we'd already done another one. And you said, no, 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 shelf that. It you was, uh, so for those listening, we started down the road of Kate's former career, which is nursing, how she wanted to make an impact with the uh, medical industry. Okay. We actually designed that book. And I, I, I actually think that's on the back burner. I think you'll do it at some point. I don't know. If like, this, this is the one I think we need to do now. Oh, it was the one that, and, and that, so that was the other thing is that um, like getting enough, you're getting a good push from ex- external. And this is about that ex- ex- that outsourcing is yeah. it's enough pressure, put a nice amount of pressure exerted on yourself that you will go past that discomfort that says, oh my God, this is me in a little bound up 160 page thing. Yeah. People are going to chuck in their handbags, hopefully, all around the country. Just do it. Like, just be vulnerable and and don't be scared because shit, look where it takes you. And I haven't even bloody printed the thing yet. (laughs) (laughs) We've only just begun, haven't we? That's right. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Well, look, I think that that brings us to a really nice close because I think that... um, you know, what I've seen in you is is a smart lady who's passionate about her clients and doing some good stuff, who's kind of found this vehicle in the book to become more than more than just a book, to become, you know, a business and, and hopefully, uh, you know, I, I think of it like an empire for good. You know, I mean, I, I think if you could, if you could really shift that, uh, the kind of, um, tension that exists in in our tradies lives that would be a pretty significant impact Mm, yeah and it's it's all you hope for it's all you hope for doing something like this so excellent well thank you so much for being on the call today it's uh and making the time um and and so we will follow you uh i'm going to get some photos of you with your book and add it to the to the notes here in the Mm -hmm. in the module so we can see your actual book Uh, And we really look forward to seeing where this takes you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And good luck to everybody. Just do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right.